So in the last two videos, I've been kind of diving into Go, and now that I feel like I'm basically an expert at Go, I want to get this stuff deployed somewhere. So I figured the best logical step is to set up a Kubernetes cluster and get my Go containers running in that cluster, because everyone knows how easy Kubernetes is to get running with Go. And also both Go and Kubernetes are created by Google. So I feel like, you know, you're already part of the Google ecosystem, you might as well just commit. And then finally, we're going to be deploying to a managed Kubernetes cluster on DigitalOcean. I know it's not Google Cloud Compute, which is probably what you Google fanboys might want me to deploy to, but let's just do some baby steps. At some point, I will be fully immersed in the Google ecosystem. So jokes aside, I have a file vault repo, and I want to kind of walk you through the things I learned over the past 24 hours about Kubernetes. Obviously, I'm not a master at it. I have no idea what I'm doing. But I think DigitalOcean has a pretty cool Kubernetes managed solution. Uh, the reason I'm choosing a managed solution is because I tried spinning up my own cluster and I just ran to bug after bug. So I said, screw that. I'm going to use a managed solution for now. And when I'm more expert at this, I'm going to go back and create my own cluster with my own VMs. So let's just go through here. I'm going to create a cluster. I'm just going to set it to one node. I'm going to drop this down to the cheaper node because I'm cheap. And then let's go and let's just go ahead and create this. So when you are spinning up a cluster, typically you have something called a control plane, which is the main thing that's like orchestrating all of these nodes. Okay, so when it comes to Kubernetes, it's an orchestration service, right? So you have a bunch of Docker images, you need to get them ran somewhere, you need to have them scale up and scale down automatically, you need to get them deployed with a rollout strategy. I do believe Kubernetes does like a kind of a, a blue green deployment where you deploy a new version, it's going to spin up some pods, and then it's going to tear down the other pods when your new pods are. There's a lot of terminology to Kubernetes that I'm still trying to learn. But overall, this is how you can create a managed cluster. Now, if you're a real Chad, you could probably set up your own cluster using cube admin, um, which is what I tried doing myself and I gave up because I just kept running into Roblox. But basically, you set up a VM, you install Docker, you install cube admin, you set up, you do like a cube admin init, and that'll set up one node to be your control plane, basically. And then all your other nodes you just run a command to connect it to your main admin um, control plane node. And now you can basically do the same thing that you're doing inside your managed solution, but it's all managed by you. So you basically have to be the one setting up this cluster, doing the configuration about IPs and whatever else. And as you can tell, doing this yourself, I mean, like, look at all this stuff you have to read through. Not very fun. It's not too hard, I don't think. It's just, you know, it's just a lot of stuff. So I'm lazy, so let's just go ahead and use this managed solution because I'm a big fan of just letting someone else who's smarter than me post this stuff for me. Anyway, let's just dive down into this. So once you have this cluster set up, you can go through this readme and then you can run this command using Doctool, which is a digital ocean tool they provide you where basically you run this, you run it in your terminal down here, and that's going to basically set up your context locally so that you can start doing commands inside of this cluster. So at this point, if you have cube control set up, you can say cube control, and I can say get pods, and that'll print out all the pods that are deployed to my cluster. I don't have anything, obviously. You can also do like services or deployments. Um, we do have one service called our cluster IP. Okay, so now I'm actually like talking to my real Kubernetes cluster here. You do have to set up some type of like authentication, I believe. You can't just do this without setting that up. I do believe I did like a, um, a doctor login. Anyway, we're good. Let's just go th through. They give you some commands you can do. Next, next, okay. So one thing I do want to clear up is like, what the heck is a control plane? Basically, there's a bunch of services that are baked into Kubernetes, such as the scheduler, the control manager, XCD, um, a distributed key value store, and your API server, all these are grouped under your control plane. So what we want to do is now that we have the cluster set up, I do have a container registry, right? So the way you deal with Kubernetes is you build Docker images and you push them to a registry, or I guess a repository, I should say. And then your cluster can link to that repository and pull in images and just start spinning them up for you. So let's go to settings here. I do believe I need to edit my integrations and I need to give this thing permissions to call my cluster. So let's just go ahead and add that in. Got a nice little modula pops up saying we're good to go. So now what we can do is we have this main.go file and this is what we're going to try to get deployed as a web server to our cluster. It basically has a get endpoint on keys and it has a post request endpoint on keys. So you can basically just store random things and retrieve them later. So how do I build this? 
okay? And get this deployed to my cluster. Well, the first step is you go to the readme where I wrote some steps out and I'm gonna copy this. So what this command's doing is it's building a Docker container, an image, using the Linux platform because we're running on Ubuntu on our Kubernetes cluster. And then we're tagging it with basically the same URL for our repository that we set up in DigitalOcean. So as I run this, it's gonna churn through some stuff. I've probably done this already, so it's gonna be a lot of cache. It'll be pretty quick. But it's building up your Go binary, and then it's gonna basically put that inside the Docker image. So let's look at the Docker file real quick and try to understand how this is working. This is just a generic Docker image. It has Golang 1.22 Alpine. It basically builds up your Go binary. And then finally, it's going to create a second build step, which is going to run your Go binary. So this builds it, and then now you have a main executable, and this is going to basically run on your cluster inside your deployment or your pod or whatever. So that's what we're doing right now. We're just building up the image. And then when this is done, we're going to push the image from my local computer to my repository on DigitalOcean. And just because you guys like diagrams, let's just kind of outline what's going on so you guys are fully clear what's going on. So this is my little laptop, my little laptop. So step one is we just built our Docker image. I'll title this deploying to Kubernetes. Also, KAS is an abbreviation you might see. That's basically shorthand for Kubernetes. But we just did step one. We just built the image. Notice that it's done. And now what we need to do is we need to push that image to our DigitalOcean repository. So you run this command. It's tagged with the latest tag. That'll push it over. And then that's basically what we did over here. So I'll just say do um, docker push image to repository. Okay, we got this little image here. This is our Docker image. And we just pushed that. Okay, so now let's go back to the container registry and let's look at the images we have here. So notice that we have one called latest. This is the one we just pushed 25 seconds ago. And this is going to be pulled in from our cluster when we decide to deploy it. So let's diagram this out a little bit more so that we're all on the same page. All right, so now let's move on to the Kubernetes part. So we have a Kubernetes cluster. I'll just denote that with this box over here. And somehow we want to get this cluster to run our Go image, okay? So the way Kubernetes works, again, is you have like this main node, this control plane node. And by the way, if I say anything wrong in the video, correct me, I've only spent like 24 hours researching this. And we want to basically tell this control plane that, hey, we need to get a deployment set up which is basically a configuration that says you need to run X amount of Go servers. So I'll say like Go server one. Um, and then we'll maybe we'll have like a replica. So we'll have like Go server two replica. And these are basically considered deployments or pods. I think the individual running things are called pods, but like the, the actual grouping of these, this is called like a deployment. And so we'll see in a second, I'll show you the configuration where we have the deployment set up. So in addition to the deployment, you have something called a service. So this is a service definition. And this is going to basically say, hey, you need to make sure that at all times you have this deployment going and you need to have X amount of replicas going. And so the control plane is basically what's responsible for continuously checking to make sure that these services and these deployments and these pods are all running at all times. And when you need to deploy a new version, it will behind the scenes figure out how to update one node and then tear down this node and then bring up a new version of a new node. So another thing I wanna point out is that inside your cluster, all of these pods and services and deployments or whatever, they're not accessible from the internet, right? So if this is the internet, this is our internet cloud, none of this is accessible by default, right? In order to give someone access to hit something inside your, your cluster, you need to set up a load balancer. So inside of the service itself, we're gonna set up a load balancer. And from what I understand, where you deploy your cluster, like if you're using DigitalOcean like I am, or if you're using like AWS EKS, or if you're using Google Cloud Platform, your load balancer is gonna be defined by the actual like platform you're using. Or if you wanna roll your own, maybe you can define one with like Nginx or Caddy or whatever. But when you set up a load balancer, you're basically saying, hey, I want to allow a certain port to be accessed by the internet. Okay. So that's kind of like the overall way this is all working. 
Now, how do we get this stuff all deployed out, right? So you have configuration files, which you'll see right here. I have a deployment YAML and a service YAML. And from my laptop or from your CI CD pipeline, what you do is you can run a command using a tool called kubectl, right? This is the command line tool that you're going to use to basically take your YAML files and you're going to apply them to your cluster, right? So if I do apply hyphen F and then I give it a directory like this, that's going to run through that directory, find all my YAML files and apply those configurations and push them to my control plane so my control plane can figure out how to deploy these nodes, deployments and services, et cetera, right? So let's do this part. I'm gonna run this command and I'm gonna talk about some of the configuration files that I have just directly from my laptop. But again, you would wanna do this from a CI CD pipeline or some other place at some point. All right, so over here, I'm gonna say cube CTL apply hyphen F and then we're gonna say dot slash KAS. Again, I have a folder here called KAS. You can name this whatever you want and you can name your files, whatever you want. Let's just run this. And then this is going to spin up my deployment in my service and my load balancer okay so to verify this is working you can say cube control get pods and you should see one pod running okay status are running 10 seconds ago you can also get your services okay so now we have a load balancer service we also have a cluster ip service like we saw originally and then additionally i think you could say cube ctl get deployments this is another thing that we have set up Okay, so now we verified everything is running. We have access to all this stuff. It does sometimes take a little bit of time for your load balancer to get set up. So after running this command, our control plane knows about our configuration files. It knows about what it needs to do. And at some point it's going to say, hey, I need to grab the image that you published to this repository and start using it and run it in my cluster. Okay, so now let's look at the YAML files because that should be kind of fun to do. So in the YAML file, we have a service here and let's look at this service. Basically, you say, I want to get a load balancer set up and I want to expose port 80 publicly to the internet and I want to point it at a container image that has a port of 8080. Okay, and then the selector is basically saying, look through all of my um, deployments and find the one called key value app. Okay, notice that we have like labels attached to everything. So the service has a label called key value app. But if we were to look at the deployment now, just split this right. The deployment over here also has a label somewhere. Uh, if you look here, it says template metadata label key value app. So from what I understand, we're basically saying, hey, create a load balancer that points to port 8080 inside of this deployment here and find it by key value app. So over here we have key value app. That has a specification set out to say, hey, I need a container set up. This is the, the repository location. Notice that it has that same DigitalOcean registry that we set up with key value app latest. So that is basically saying, have this deployment point to this and grab the latest version from that repository. And you can also tag this as like one, two, whatever you want. I'm just doing latest right now. Um, but if you want to kind of like version lock this in, you can. And you basically just need to run cube control apply again and that'll kind of deploy that out okay so let's look at this so basically we're saying make a container using this image and then specify that inside of that image we're going to be listening on port 8080 okay and again if you look at the docker file we expose port 8080 and then also if you look at the main go file and go to the bottom we are hosting this at port 8080 okay so that's kind of how we're like getting access all the way down to the container and the service that's running in the container. And then also over here, you see there's replicas. If you set this to two, I think you'll get a better deployment, rolling deployments. Um, if you just keep it at one, I think you're gonna be, it's gonna have downtime. So maybe we should make it two. And then over here, I kind of already explained this and we have the load balancer set up. And that's kind of how it works, right? So you have these two YAML files that define what's gonna be running in your cluster. And if you, let's say you had more services you wanna get deployed out at some point, you just make more services and more deployments. Or you can just kind of put them in the same file down here, I believe. I think you just put like hyphens. Is that how I've seen it? To kind of separate different deployments and stuff. So I could kind of paste one down here if I wanted to. But what we're going to do is I just made an update to replicas. And we want to apply that. So how do you apply your changes? Well, you just run and apply again. Pretty straightforward that's going to look through the configuration it sees that hey a deployment has changed 
and now we can say cube control get deployments and then we should see that there's two out of two now so now we actually have two pods running that are running our go servers so that when we deploy a new version we won't have downtime all right so now we have access so we should have access to our cluster now how do we access our cluster well we have to go ahead and say cube control get services i believe and we should print out an external ip of our load balancers let's go ahead and grab that external ip and let's type it in here and hopefully it'll load up our go server okay page not found that's actually a good sign you might think that's a bad sign but it's a good sign so now i can actually go to keys and i can say other and then that should give us back the value that's stored there now we don't have a value stored so let's go to thunder client and we're going to post something there so let's grab this entire url we're going to post in this data sorry it's not keys it's key i don't know why i named it key so now i'm posting some json to that key slash other endpoint and notice that i'm sending an age and message of testing so now if i go and change this to a git request and do it on that same key i do a git notice that some of them are getting back null and some of them are getting back um an actual defined value again this is because i have two pods deployed but when i did that post request it's just storing that key value store to one of them again as i'm learning go i was trying to build out like a, a key value store like replicas um obviously i haven't set this up to even work with two servers running at the same time so i think changing replicas to two was actually a bad idea so we should probably just change this back to one go ahead and apply that let's go ahead and post a value in here and now this should only ever hit one of our pods ever and now we should get that value back every single time so last thing i'm going to do is just walk through real quick the digital ocean kubernetes cluster some cool things you can do is you can go to resources down here and you can see that you have your node pool as you need more and more services you probably increase the size of your node pool so that a you have some type of redundancy set up and some failover and then b you have better performance right you can like have multiple things spread out onto various machines now the cool thing about kubernetes is i don't have to choose or define where these things are living the orchestration tooling behind the scenes is going to figure out which node has the most memory right so technically i didn't really explain something in this diagram but your cluster is going to be made up of multiple nodes right so these are actually like multiple vms like node one um, node two node three and this is just basically something that Kubernetes uh, on DigitalOcean is going to spin up for you and automatically provision and hook up to your cluster. I would say I did a poor job explaining that part. So let's just go ahead and scale this up. A cluster is made up of multiple nodes. One of your nodes is going to be like managing your control plane stuff, I believe. I guess technically this is like a service configuration. So I should probably just use like a configuration file here to make that more apparent. Um, but this, I do believe there is an actual physical node that's running your like your main Kubernetes API, which is what we're connecting to when we run kubectl. But this over here, again, these could potentially be running on one node. These could be separated and running on different nodes. The point of this is that it's going to take your server and distribute across multiple nodes without you having to intervene, okay? So pretty cool stuff. Um, and then finally, we have a load balancer section over here, which is what's allowing us to access our API when we do that postman request okay everything seems good it's green now there's some more stuff that i don't really know about there's like ways you can add volume so if you want to have some persistent volume for your entire cluster you can do that and again this will depend on your actual like hosting service so like digital ocean would have their own like volume block storage you can hook into your your cluster and then you can actually have your service start reading and writing from this network volume right yeah, so at this point, I don't know how to set up a custom domain for your load balancer. I know I saw an option somewhere, but at this point, I don't know where it is. I mean, you can set up SSL here, but um, I have to read through the docs and figure that out. But again, this is like my really quick overview of how I understand Kubernetes. If you have more knowledge, feel free to leave a comment so we can all learn from each other. Um, other than that, give me a thumbs up if you like this overview. And also, I have a Discord channel. You guys are welcome to join if you want to find a place to hang out or talk to some other developers. Have a good day and happy coding.